I made fish almondine style for a couple of friends recently and they asked me for the recipe and I figured it was better just to uh, demonstrate it again than trying to write down the recipe. <clears throat> so in terms of ingredients, you can use any kind of fish. In fact, the I think the formal name of the recipe is trout almondine because it was first it was developed in Europe for um, cooking, a way to cook trout. Butter or whatever kind of butter substitute you might use. You want lemons. Um, I happen to be lucky to live where we get baseball size Meyer lemons, so those are really good. I use white vermouth for this. White wine is fine, uh, but you don't really have to open a bottle of white wine in order to do this recipe. If you just have a bottle of vermouth handy, it's good for a lot of other cooking tasks, pretty much anything that you'd put white wine into. I've got flour for breading the fish, and I bought some slivered almonds. You could use sliced almonds. Um, I generally have whole almonds, which I slice myself. They're not real pretty or consistent, so I figured I'd go ahead and get some uh, slivered almonds. You need some kind of oil to, uh, to cook it with, and uh, you could use your butter or butter substitute. I tend to use avocado oil, which has a very high smoke point uh, to do this. And then I add butter at the end as a way to get the kind of classic butter flavor into it. So what I'm using here is a nonstick pan. I think that's the best pan to use uh, unless you're really, really sure of what you're doing. Uh, if you use a stainless pan, uh, you're going to get a, a, a different type of sauce in the end, a little bit darker sauce, because you're going to get some fond in the pan from it. In between is an aluminum pan, which is my favorite, and uh, that, that'll develop less of a fond than the stainless. Uh, but I think uh, for the first few times you do this recipe, it's best to use a uh, uh, nonstick pan. And a big enough pan that there's room around the fish in the pan. You really don't want to crowd the fish in this recipe. So while that's continuing to warm up, I'm going to get that really hot. And uh, I'm actually going to test. Uh, I'm pushing the limits of what you would do with a nonstick pan in terms of heat for this. Uh, I happen to have red grouper. You can use any kind of fish you want. I, uh, this was caught uh, about a month ago or so. It's been in my freezer and I just want to check it. And uh, I'm curious to see how well the red grouper uh, freezes. I've already had some grilled that was fresh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my salt and pepper and I'm going to salt and I'm actually not going to use that black pepper. I'm going to use white pepper. Doesn't have to be fresh ground, but I think white pepper is better. I'm basically just grinding, uh, grinding it in a classic pepper grinder. Uh, what you want to do is season the fish a little bit heavier than you might think. Um, and part of this is because I don't use seasoned flour. I don't season my flour. I think it's just kind of... Uh, I think it's better to have the uh, flour coating on the outside without the seasoning in it. I'm going to pat the outside. It's kind of moist. And I'm going to put it right into the flour. Any amount of flour that will allow you to dredge the fish. And there's something I meant to show you before before I breaded it. Fish has a um, the outside, which is the outside of the fish. Uh, or rather, the uh, it has a meaty side, which is against the ribs. And it has an outside, which is against uh, the skin. And that skin side is very flat. Uh, the uh, more domed uh, rib side is better as your presentation side. So after I bread this, shake off excess flour, my oil's good and hot, 
I'm going to put it down presentation side first. Now, pro tip, in terms of knowing in the end whether your fish is done, note the size of your fillets when you put them in the skillet because uh, just like meat, red meat and chicken, fish draws up and shrinks somewhat as it cooks. So that's going to be a great indicator to you. So you, if you have a mental picture of that, if you had multiple pieces in a pan, you really don't want them touching. If, if you got the pieces touching, you're probably too close because you want to, the, the whole process of uh, getting a good crust on the outside requires some amount of circulation. Uh, in terms of equipment, the safest thing to use with a non-stick pan would be a uh, soft uh, spatula, which is made for that purpose. I'm just going to use this classic fish turner because I know I'm going to be real careful with it. Probably the most important <clears throat> thing from an equipment standpoint after the pan is having one of these flexible, uh, it's kind of a hybrid between a spatula and a spoon. I like the ones that, that are slightly spooned on one side and have a little bit of a dome shape. And what you're going to see when we're making the sauce and working around the edges and everything, this thing's going to conform to the pan. It's going to be, you're going to be able to scrape things up from the pan uh, that you wouldn't be able to with a uh, something that was very straight sided or more rigid or even something wider. So what you're going to see as this cooks, remember what I said about the mental picture of the fish in the pan, it's actually shrunk some. And the other thing that shows you it's cooking is it's getting white uh, around the edges kind of up to about here. So that means it's, it's almost halfway cooked through. Uh, usually I like to cook it more than halfway through on the first side because that's the presentation side. And so you want to have a little bit of a dark look. No telling uh, what this is going to look like at this point, but I'm just going to keep going because it's not uh, not in a situation where I have to do uh, do anything. Hope I didn't knock my camera out of whack there. Now, while I was talking, I meant to uh, I meant to be doing the almonds, and usually what I would do is just do the almonds in the pan that I'm going to do the fish in, but since I forgot to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and crank up a light under that. I like to do the almonds in butter because it gives a butter taste. This is real butter. Uh, the other thing with the almonds is um, you want to put some salt in. So I can see some smoke coming off of this fish. I'm not going to turn the fan on. That means it's uh, getting real toasty on that first side. So there you have it. There you see it. And uh, if you have a mental picture or rewind the video, I think that was the orientation of the fish. You can see it's shrunk a uh, significant amount. And it's, it's just about done through. There is probably, I would guess, only about a quarter inch of um, meat that wasn't totally cooked on that uh, on the other side. I'm going to just give this a second. Normally I'd have the fan running, but it would make noise, so I'd rather not have the noise on the video. And I've got a plate that's really warm. Normally you'd be putting this on a platter if it were multiple people. Uh, I'm just going to put right onto a plate I'm going to use for dinner, and I can see, I mean, this thing is done. I can feel the, uh, the firmness of it and see how much it has shrunk. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it on there. And I'll stick it on top of the warmer oven, toaster oven. I'll stick it inside of there. Okay, the butter is just beginning to get a little brown. What they call noisette because you can smell it. The noise. In there. 
and I'm going to throw a little bit of salt on the almonds, both because it tastes good and it also will help them to slip around in the pan more. And meanwhile, I'm going to deglaze the pan for the fish with this vermouth. And don't freak out if it catches on fire. That happens sometimes with vermouth if you have a really high light under it. Okay, I'm going to give this a little flip. These, these things are done. I'm cooking them a little hot here. <clears throat> Just flip them around and they're ready to go on the fish. Now for the sauce. I've cooked the alcohol off the vermouth and uh, reaching for a little bit of lemon here. These uh, big Meyer lemons have a ton of juice in them. And I like a lot of lemon flavor, so I'm just going to do that. And the one thing I think I forgot was some parsley, and I think I have some out back. I'm going to have to move fast because that sauce is cooking down. Let's see what we got here. Oh man, parsley situation is grim. Um, I'm gonna get some rosemary then, I think. I can't believe I could have sworn I had some. Oh, there's a tiny bit down there, way down there. All right. Yeah, it's hardly worth it. And I got rosemary and parsley. sauce is doing okay still cooking down I'm going to use this spatula to stir it up so um, the 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 darkness that you see in there is from the cooking of the flour and that's looking pretty good now what I'm going to do optional step is uh, swirl in some butter Whoops. Which you usually want to do. Two second rule. Uh, you usually want to do this off the off the burner so that it doesn't break. In other words, it doesn't uh, the um, fats of the butter don't separate from the sauce. Okay, that's ready to roll. Let's pull the fish back out. And it's going to be interesting to see if the fish dropped any juice. No. Okay. We're ready to put the toasty almonds over there. Just do it like that. Here's the sauce. off my herbs totally optional step I wouldn't bother with this usually for myself unless it was really needed for the flavor of the fish I'll just do a little bit of rosemary along with the parsley That's it.